Today's lesson will focus on waves and boundaries, specifically looking at what happens when a wave hits a free end or a fixed end, and also what happens when a wave encounters a change in medium. All right, so a boundary, how we define a boundary? Simply a change in medium. So an example, simple example would be taking a spring, um, creating a wave pulse and watching as that pulse encounters something like a wall or it could be a change into another spring or maybe into a different rope so basically just changing media so that boundary is located where those two um, two objects kind of intersect this would be that boundary condition okay so the one thing to remember with boundaries is that waves are um, simply energy okay so when think about what's going to happen in a boundary think about what will happen when energy encounters a boundary Okay, so we have to think of uh, the system and the environment. Alright, so when a wave, again, wave is energy, when it encounters a boundary, what is that energy going to do? Well, some of the energy is going to be transmitted into the new medium, meaning it's going to be transferred into it. And then some of that energy is going to be reflected back, or it's going to stay within the medium it is already. Okay, so at a boundary, you're always going to have energy that's transmitted and some energy that's reflected. Alright, so just as we go through this, there's just some terminology we need to get down. So these are kind of the four key terms to understanding um, fixed versus free end and the different types of boundaries we'll see. Okay? So the first one is the incident wave. So the incident wave, um, when you're looking at a boundary condition, the incident wave would be the wave uh, that is, I guess, we'll define it with its own term, is incident on that boundary. Okay, it's kind of the initial wave pulse before any sort of um, um, before any sort of reflection or anything like that. Uh, the reflected wave, obviously, is after this um, incident wave interacts with the boundary, some of the energy is going to be reflected back into the new medium. Okay, that wave is the reflected wave. Okay, and then there's also the transmitted wave. The transmitted wave, think transmit or transfer. That's the energy or the part of the wave that is transferred into the new medium. Okay, and then lastly, one of the terms you'll hear me talk about is phase. Okay, and what I mean by phase um, is really the component of the wave, whether it's talking about a crest, trough, compression, or rarefaction. Those are called the phase. All right, so um, you'll hear me say two things either something is in phase or out of phase. So I can say in phase, out of phase. I may talk about the phase is, you know, inverted, something like that. Talking about crest troughs, we can also relate this to sound in terms of compressions and rarefactions. All right, so when encountering a boundary, there's really two types of boundaries that energy or a wave can interact with. The first is a fixed end boundary. So this boundary is one that does not move, it's stiff. Okay, um, think of attaching a spring to a wall, the wall would be that fixed end, so that can be able to move. Um, in terms of just, maybe it's not just a simple um, hitting a wall, but maybe it's a change in medium. So the change in medium would be going at a fixed end, would be going from um, a less dense medium to a more dense medium. Okay, so you're switching the density there, going from more dense, or less dense to more dense. Okay, that would be the same thing as hitting a fixed end. And the other type is a free end. So this is a boundary that when it strikes is really free to move. Okay, um, and I'll kind of talk more about that one. Um, and in terms of simply not just hitting like a, like a wall or something, this would be, if you're talking about a change in medium, going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. So think of maybe going from a tightly wound spring to something like a slinky. It's going from more dense to less dense. Okay, that's something that would be considered a free end boundary. Okay. All right. So in class, you should have done the um, simulation on the internet, uh, looking at the different types of reflection. So here are kind of just the kind of pictures of what you should have seen. So first, we're going to look at a fixed end reflection. So with the fixed end. It should have created just a wave pulse that should have been creating a, a crest. Okay, um, As the crests interacted with the boundary, notice that the boundary 
was not free to move, it was fixed. Okay, so thus a fixed end reflection. And then after the reflection, once, okay, the reflected wave, once you saw, okay, you should have noticed that first the direction of the wave obviously changed. That should be an obvious thing if it's really bouncing off that boundary. And the other thing you should have noticed is that, okay, the phase of that wave is inverted. So, kind of summarizing these things with a fixed end, the reflected wave is seen to be inverted meaning it's the opposite phase. So where it is a crest, it'll go to a trough, okay? And vice versa, if it's a trough, it'll go to a crest, okay? All right, um, and also it travels in the opposite direction. Think of it, if it's reflecting back, it's bouncing back into the new medium. Okay, so let's wonder, ask ourselves, why does this happen? Okay, why, why does it when it hits a fixed end, which I'll draw as a solid dot, why is it when it hits a fixed end, does it come back inverted? Okay, why does it do that? Well, let's apply what we know. Well, okay, looking at it, it's a fixed end. So when the wave gets to this part, remember this, these are really a wave pulse, but it's a transverse wave, meaning the particles are going to oscillate perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So when the wave pulse reaches this boundary, all right, the particles of that of that medium want to pull this boundary up. It wants to go moving to the right, it wants to pull the things up perpendicular to the direction. However, this end is fixed. So, think of Newton's laws. This would be an application of Newton's first law. Okay, label there is N1L, Newton's first law. So as it hits the boundary, this is a more dense medium. Okay, think of something with greater inertia. This has less inertia, it's not going to be able to move this. Alright? So as this pulls up, this is not moving. Okay, so it's got more inertia. And then we can also apply Newton's third law to this. Apply Newton's third law to this. Okay? That as this particle begins to pull up, this fixed end begins to pull back down with the same amount of force. So what happens then is that this fixed end first has more inertia. Okay? and it pulls with the same force in opposite direction is going to cause this wave pulse to now flip phase. Instead of being a crest, it's going to drop to a trough. And even since it's reflected, it's always going to go back. Okay, so looking at why this occurs is really an application of Newton's laws. All right, um, and you should have also known through this that the speed of the reflected wave remained the same. Okay, why? Well, if you think about when we talked about wave speed, the wave is keeping within the same medium. Okay, so if it's in the same medium, the wave, obviously, is going to maintain the same speed. Alright, so we also talked that a fixed end, right, what I mentioned before, is that a fixed end can also be represented by um, a new medium that is more dense or slower. Okay, think of more dense, that's going to relate back to Newton's first law. Okay, more dense, got more mass per unit length, more mass, more inertia, it's going to be harder to move. Okay. So this kind of boundary can be seen as a um, entering a new medium that is slower. Okay, so it's going to change the speed. All right, now the second type of boundary that you could face is a free end. Okay, so same thing here. You should have on the simulation created a pulse that went as a crest. All right. Um, now notice that this end is no longer fixed in place. Now it's free to move. So as the pulse then encounter or interacted with the boundary. The boundary is free to move, so it moved up, moved back down, and during that process, the wave, the, the reflected wave you should have seen, went back with the same phase, but just in opposite directions. Okay, so putting these together, the wave is seen to be the same phase, it travels in the opposite direction. Now, again, just like we did with the fixed end, why does this happen? Okay, so let's kind of apply forces on what we know already. Alright, so if the wave is interacting, and I'll draw a free end like this, okay, the wave is encountering that free end. Now, just like before, we applied Newton's first law and applied Newton's third law. Now let's apply, try and think of what would happen in this case. Okay, well, it's coming in as a pulse, and again, the same thing. Particles want to vibrate perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So they are going up and down while the wave is moving to the right. Now when it gets to 
the boundary, okay, the particles are going to want to move perpendicular. So they're going to begin to pull this boundary up. Okay, so really what happens here is it's an application of Newton's first law again. Why is it able to pull it up? Is because this is a more dense medium, or it's starting off in a more dense medium, okay, and it's hitting something that's less dense. Okay, so think of Newton's first law again. It's dealing with inertia. Okay, so we're dealing with inertia again. And then, once this hits, since it's able to move, it's going to pull this free end up, meaning it's going to accelerate this up. So it's going to accelerate. When it gets to this point, now it's going to particles are going to come back down and it's going to accelerate back down. So we're dealing with forces and acceleration, so it's an application of Newton's second law. Okay, so the particles are going to pull up, it's less dense, so it'll move, it'll move up, then they'll pull back down, it'll come back down, and that is what creates that, oops, that same phase coming back in the opposite direction. Okay, so the same kind of thing happens. Okay, and notice again, just like we did before, since we are maintaining it, we're staying within the same medium, the reflected wave is the same speed. Alright, so a free end reflection, yeah, we're, we're hitting, kind of looking at just one boundary, but applying this to many things, it's kind of looking at a, um, really hitting a different medium that is faster, that is less dense. So we're hitting a medium that is less dense than a medium the wave is initially traveling through. Okay, so how is that going to change the wave? Well, less dense, less mass per unit length, change the speed, all those sorts of things. Okay, so it's a free end ref All right, now with these boundary conditions, no, it's pretty obvious a wave is not always going to travel in a spring or a rope or anything like that. Okay, really waves, we're talking about mechanical waves, we're talking about sound, and then we can also deal with electromagnetic waves. Okay, so any type of wave can encounter a change in medium. Think of mechanical waves that we've been looking at. We can go from a spring to a rope. Okay, this would be like hitting a fixed end. We could also go from in reverse, rope to spring. That's like hitting a free end. Okay, think of sound. Sound is a wave, you can think of an echo. What happens in an echo is sound is traveling in air and then it hits a wall. Think of the density there. Air is less dense, then it hits a wall to a more dense. So what happens? Okay, it's reflected back. All right. <clears throat> you can also think of sound moving in warm air to cold air. You can also think of, um, okay, so warm air. Warm air has a different pressure than cold air. The difference in pressure is gonna cause uh, sound to travel um, different, uh, it's gonna travel slower in cold air than it would in warm air. All right, and then you can also think of air to water. You can talk about sound. You can talk about light. Um, all right, it's it's the speed of that wave or all those reflection refraction. Think of light when light hits water. You see that reflection off the water. Um, you can also get an echo off of water, so it can imply the sound as well. All right. So really, when we're talking about this, the reflected wave is going to depend on the density of the new medium. So you can have many different changes in medium. How is it going to be reflected? Well, that depends on the density. Alright, so with the boundary condition, there's really two things you can have. You can go from um, a more dense boundary, which would be, if this is a boundary, if we have a wave coming from the less dense to the more dense, this would be like hitting a fixed end. Okay, or if we're going from a more dense boundary to a less dense boundary, this would be like hitting a free end. All right. Um, so we can apply these boundary conditions to a change in medium, not just simply hitting a stiff or loose wall or object. <clears throat> now notice if we're talking that a wave is energy. Okay, remember always that wave is simply energy. So we should know enough about energy now to kind of think about this but yeah we're dealing with reflection but really if a wave is energy what is going to happen is that some of the wave is going to be transmitted so some of the energy yes is going to be reflected back into the new medium into the same medium however some of the notice says light but some of the wave is also going to be transferred into the new medium okay now this is what we call the transmitted wave think about anything um, I guess if you throw 
I mean, if you physically throw an object, some of the energy is going to travel with the object. If that object hits something, some of the energy is going to cross over from that system into the environment, maybe hit the wall or something like that. Same happens with a wave. Think of like maybe a water wave. Okay, as a water wave hits the shoreline, okay, that water wave is going to cause damage to that shoreline or whatever because it carries energy. It's transferring that energy into the new medium. So this transmitted wave is going to represent the transferred energy. And just like with the reflected wave, the amount of energy that's transmitted, it's transferred into the medium, is going to re really going to rely on the type of boundary. Okay, so that means are we hitting a more dense or are we hitting a less dense boundary? It's going to depend on that. All right. <clears throat> so when you're looking at transmission, when we're looking from a less dense boundary to a more dense boundary, again, we said that's like hitting a fixed end. All right. So if, let's say we have an incident pulse that is a crest going to hit the, this boundary from less dense to more dense. What happens, the, in, you know, the reflected pulse, like we've seen, since it's a like a fixed end, is going to be inverted and is going to travel in the opposite direction. And the transmitted wave is kind of shown here. As the incident pulse is a crest, notice that the uh, reflected, or the, sorry, the transmitted wave is the same phase. Okay, is also a crest. Okay, so one thing to realize is that it's going to be transmitted in the same phase. But notice there's a slight difference. Okay, if you notice what changed, you should have noticed that the wavelength changed. Okay, the incident pulse had a greater wavelength than the transmitted pulse. Okay, why do you think that is? Talk about that in this. Okay, so notice when it hit from a less dense to a more dense boundary, it was similar to hitting a fixed end. So the reflected wave, like we can apply before, was inverted and traveled in the opposite direction and it travels at the same speed because it's within the same medium. Okay, so this is the reflected wave. All right, the transmitted wave, however, okay, this one should have seen had a smaller wavelength. The wavelength changed. So when going from a less dense to more dense, the wavelength changed. Well, why is that? Why do you think that is? Okay. Um, and also notice that the transmitted wave had the same phase. So energy is just, that should make sense because energy is just being transferred. But the whole thing is why then does the wavelength change? Well, if you remember back to wave speed, the speed of a wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Okay. Remember that when a wave is in a medium, it really is traveling at a speed relative to this re relationship here, which we talked about as the elastic property of that medium divided by the inertial property of that medium. Okay, so if we're going to a more dense boundary, okay, more dense, this is represented by a slower medium. It's going to, this wave is going to travel slower, okay. Um, it's got more of an inertial property than it has an elastic property. Okay, so what's going to happen is that the speed is going to decrease. Okay, so the speed is going to decrease. So if the speed decreases, you can think here what happens to the right. Well, remember the v is constant. Okay, so if the speed decreases, what's going to happen is the wavelength of that wave is going to decrease. So the wavelength is going to decrease, and that's why we saw. Because the speed is changing, what changes in the new medium is not really the frequency of the wave, but it is the wavelength. The wavelength decreases because of the decrease in the speed of that wave. All right, now let's look at this process in verse. Now let's go from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. Okay, here, notice again, we're going to start off with a crest. Our incident pulse is a crest. It's going to go to this... Um, this boundary. The boundary we're going from is more dense to less dense. So looking at this type of interaction, this is like going from or to a free end. Okay, so this is like going to a free end. What's going to happen? Well, like we saw before, the reflected wave is going to reflect back, and because it's a hitting a free end, you're applying Newton's first and second law. The wave is going to be reflected back with the same uh, phase in the opposite direction. So again, it's going to travel at the same speed. Notice now that the wave that's being transmitted, again, is going to have the same phase as it did as the incident pulse traveling in the new direction. Now notice, again, change in wavelength. Here the wavelength for your incident pulse was small. 
and our, our transmitted pulse, notice that the wavelength increase. Again, we'll apply why we think that is. So for a free end, notice that the speed of the wave and the wavelength of reflected pulses are the same. Okay. Um, one thing I didn't mention before, but if you notice on the previous diagrams, one thing that's changing is that if we have some of the wave reflected, some of the wave that's transmitted, you should notice that the amplitude of both the reflected wave and the transmitted wave are different than the incident wave. Okay, and if you think of that, some of the, the amplitude we said represents the energy. Okay, so some of the energy is transferred, some of the energy is reflected back. Okay, so the amplitude change is due to how much energy is being transmitted or uh, reflected. However, right, now let's focus on the speed. Okay, um, the transmitted pulse you should have seen had a larger wavelength. Well, why do we think that is? Okay, it had a larger wavelength. Um, also had the same phase, and it moves with a faster speed. Okay. Why does the speed change? Well, the speed change is due to the density of the medium. We are now going from a more dense to a less dense medium. Okay, so the speed is going to be faster. All right? There's going to be an increase in the elastic property of the medium and a decrease in the inertial property of that medium because it is less dense. All right, that's going to happen. That's going to cause a change in the speed. And because the speed changes, well, what property does that change? Well, that's going to increase the wavelength of that wave. Okay, so the speed here is changing the wavelength. It's going to travel um, greater distance in a greater time, so it's affecting the wavelength. Okay, really what we looked at here in, in this in a quick little lesson on boundaries is that first, understanding what is the difference between fixed versus a free end reflection. Okay. Um, again, really for this, think about waves being as energy. Okay, a wave is energy. Um, so what happens with that? Well, so we looked at the transmitted waves, reflected waves, all that. And here's kind of the main thing to get out of this is that when um, the wave encounters a new medium, the velocity is going to change. Okay. And when the velocity change, that means it's it's either going to increase or decrease the distance it travels in a certain amount of time. Okay. Well, if we think of increasing or decreasing the distance, that really is representing a change in the wavelength. Okay. So a change in the speed represents a change in the wavelength. And this is kind of one of the big things you want to get from this unit. This is something where it applies really to all waves entering a new medium, whether it's mechanical waves. Sound or sound, which is a mechanical wave, even electromagnetic waves. This is something we'll come back to um, later on in this unit, as well as when we get into light and optics and things like that, and how this change in medium affects the wavelength. Speed is changing, speed is going to change the wavelength. Okay, so this lesson again was on boundaries.